Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Uncanny X-Men issue number one. Been waiting for this one for a while. I think that a lot of, I think I speak for all of us, right? Look how thick that book is. Ooh, man, it's a good book. You know what this book is called? In other circles, it's called Home Defense. You know what I'm saying? People, you know, people like Tom King would teach you how to like roll this up and really tighten it, stab somebody with it because like you really could. Like this thing is solid, dude. You only have to roll this thing up, man. Just like... Bam! It's like a mini phone book. Jeez. I bet you if I drop this on the floor, it might break the floor. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this, guys. Ed Brisson and Matthew Rosenberg and Kelly Thompson are writers. Yo, three big brains up on this book. They're like Cerberus in, in the River Styx guarding the entrance to Hades, man. Wow. This is sick. Sick. All right. Mahmoud Asrar is the artist. Wait, that's it? Just Mahmoud? You got three writers on this. You got one artist. What's up with that? One artist. And you got Rachel Rosenberg on, on color art. I mean, she's amazing, but like, dude, one person one person doing the pencils and inks and you got three people writing this? Man, Mahmoud Asrar is a freaking awesome, amazing dude to pull off something like that. I'm just saying. Uh, cover artists. Lanil Francis Yu and Edgar Delgado. Mahmoud Asrar didn't do the cover? Never mind. Forget that punk. I'm joking. I'm joking. My mood is freaking amazing, and you know it. Uh, seriously, the art in this book is just stand out. It is stand back and watch. Uh, VC's Joe Caramanga on letters, and I am not even getting into these freaking variant covers because just get the hell out of town. That's way too many people. But I will say, um, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby <laughs> are, are up in heaven looking down, smiling at all this X goodness that we're getting. God rest their souls. God rest their souls. So um, anyway, we, we get this opening sequence, which is really cool. We get um, the, the the Generation X team is out on a mini mission, and all of a sudden Kitty Pride's powers go a little wonky. Now, she isn't the only one who has her powers going wonky, because out in the Kalahari, down in um, Botswana, they, um, they suddenly got a brand new lake, which is interesting because the Kalahari is a desert. And yeah, it's really, really, really freaking arid. And yet somehow they got a lake within the past three hours and it's teeming with life already, like bacterial life. And Beast points out how that's an impossibility. Thoroughly impossible. Anyhow, so I don't know where all that is coming from, but it's pretty sick. Anyway, Kitty gets jacked up. A bunch of the other X, uh, Generation X characters get jacked up too. Like, it is not looking good for them. Straight up not looking good for them. Um, so you've actually got some walking wounded, some that are not walking. All right? Some of them are really hurt. Anyhow, uh, these guys crash and they get attacked by the Mutant Liberation Front. They think it's just for them. They're making fun of them and that's, like, really hysterical. But uh, these guys get jacked big time. And all of a sudden, the Mutant Liberation Front is like, yeah, we're going to beat you guys up now. What's funny is they don't actually want to fight. You just got Wild Child who's got a big mouth. You know, that happens. Wild Child, uh, Wild Side, excuse me, Wild Child. We ain't going up to Canada for this. So, um, Gamma Flight. So, um, anyway, yeah, the, the, the Gen X guys are, are fighting them off and, and Jimmy Madrox keeps on showing up and he's like pimp slapping, uh, different, uh, Gen X members like, where's Kitty Pride? He's really looking for Kitty, but Kitty's already disappeared, man. She gone. Kitty gone, man. So, um, what do you call it? They, they, they show up uh, later on. There's a senator in, in City Hall in Manhattan. These guys are all having their little... Uh, the little debates, uh, not even a debate. They're, it is kind of like a debate. Anyway, um, they're giving their side of it. The the reason why the, the, the Mutant Liberation Front were at this one particular location is because they were making this, um, this experiment. It's basically to, to make mutants sterile so the mutants couldn't have children anymore, which is rough because it's already so hard for mutants to have children. You know what I'm saying? Two mutants can barely have children together. You usually got to have a mutant and a human uh, to, to, to be able to spawn life. You know what I'm saying? It very rarely happens otherwise without the help of people like Mr. Sinister. It's one of the reasons why you do have Mr. Sinister's and Sugar Man's. Sugar Man actually makes an appearance in this, by the way. Um, but anyway, they're talking about how it's such a good thing. And then the X-Men get their turn. Kitty Pryde was supposed to speak. She's not there for some reason. She she vanished. She vanished And then uh, 
Jean Grey's about to go up, but instead Jamie Madrix jumps up there, and of course he's dumb, so there's not much he could do. He, you know, he's got to have one of those moods when he multiplies, where all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, I just had a dupe that's uh, a really good orator. He, he's the guy who was on there with the King's Speech. Yeah, that's what it was. Anyway, um, go check out Ten Things About Jimmy Madrex, or Multiple Man Explained in a Minute on Comic Book University. So anyhow, um. What do you call it? North Stars in this too? I really, really, definitely dig that. So there's a big fight going on because uh, the, the multiple men attack for some reason. Anyway, Kitty Pride is being held hostage with that senator. Yeah, he winds up disappearing also, like right in front of Jean Grey's eyes. And the trick of it is the third person who is imprisoned. All I'm going to say is it's one of the X Men Black characters. Okay, so there were six. X-Men black characters who were pointed out, right? Um, it's one of them. I'm not going to say which one, but that one, one of them, is trapped here. Uh, also a prisoner. And you, whatever you're going to be thinking, dude, this is insanity. I'm looking at this like, what? So you got my attention, and that's only halfway in the middle of the book. That's the end of the first story. Now, all the other stories are 100% interconnected with each other. There are several other stories in here. Again, all written by the same three people, but they uh, and they all interconnect. Like, this is, this is comic book goodness right here. Um, if I had to make a complaint, I'm going to make a, compl a single complaint and then a single compliment. If I had to make a single complaint, it would be that Jean Grey's uh, uh, psychic abilities, not her telekinesis, but her tele uh, telepathic abilities, 100% useless in this comic book. And we've been seeing a lot of that lately, like over at X-Men Red. My telepathy doesn't seem to work it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So why are you even here then? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's odd. To say the least, it's odd. Anyhow, so, um... What have you. Uh, that, that, that's, that's one thing I'm going to complain about the book. But as far as a compliment... If I could only pick one, here's the compliment I'm going to pick. The action in this is never once interrupted. Let me say that again. It is never once interrupted. It is that good. Um, man, these guys, uh, they actually have, you know, the Gen X members fighting the Mutant Liberation Front. And it is, again, the stakes are high here. you got several members who are wounded. They were just in a plane crash. Nobody got out of that uninjured. Well, maybe uh, uh, Sake and, um, uh, you know, Armor and uh, Rock Slide. All right, maybe them. But everybody else, man, they were jacked up, okay? And some of them were so jacked up they couldn't continue. And they get attacked by the Mutant Liberation Front. This is a team who's actually used to working together. Whew. So the action and the stakes... <coughs> yeah. Yeah, it's something else, man. It is something else. They they call in for reinforcements, you know, like a good team should. And I'm talking about the, the Gen X guys. They actually do call in reinforcements for the X-Men. When the reinforcements pick up, rather than breaking the, the, uh, the tension of this fight by showing a picture of Nightcrawler answering, they simply have Nightcrawler's words. How do we know it's Nightcrawler? Because the first thing he says is, Ja. You know, yeah, I'm on my way. Like you automatically have that crappy German accent that we all have in our heads. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh yeah, I can speak with a German accent until you actually speak out loud. And it's like, oh wow, I suck. Or maybe that's just me. Anyhow, um, <laughs> it's more than just me though. Um, that was actually cool. It's a little thing, right? But it's something that's actually important because if they would have broken to a picture of him talking, it would have been like, dude, this just, it took me out of the action. Now it's not quite so intense anymore just because they showed him talking and he's sit back, relax and whatever. Even if he's all like, you know, uh, you know, screaming into there, which why would he? It would have taken me out of the, the action and this kept me in. And we still know it was Nightcrawler if, if we needed to know, you know, whatever. At least we know, you know, for certain, it's like, okay, not everybody just speaks with Ja, you know? I mean, un un unless, you know, it's like, Laughter in Spanish, you know. Ja, 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 ja. Ha, 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 ha. It's funny if you've got Spanish friends. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> Spanish speaking friends, I should say. This was solid, man. This was solid. Now it gets, here we go. It gets even better. That's right. I said it. It gets even better. There are ads in here. What? It gets better because of the ads? Yes. Shut up. It gets better because of the ads. The ads in here actually go on to explain a whole lot more of what's about to happen in these books. Boop. First off, one of the Guardians of the Galaxy is going to die in uh, Infinity War's Fallen Guardian one-shot. They actually redacted a couple things in there. That's pretty sick. But over here, X... I'm crying out loud. X-Men The Exterminated. Probably also one-shot. Funeral for Cable. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be good. Oh, wait, did, did I say that was it? Because um, I shouldn't have. I didn't. Anyway, there's actually a whole lot more also. We know what's going to happen in the next issue. We got a bunch of conversation with a bunch of people. Yeah, it's, it's going to be bad. Uh, oh, but wait, there's so much more. Guys, while you're at your comic book store, if they're worth their salt, does that say free? Secrets of Uncanny X-Men. Free! So check that out, man. This is what you're going to be looking for. Because it's got a whole bunch of good things from cover to cover. That's right. You got... Why are they talking about X-Man? Nate Gray, the Redeemer. What's up with that? In here, they start talking about how pretty soon, by issue four, they, they have a little conversation thing, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love these guys. These guys are just awesome. All of them, they're awesome. So um, they start talking about the book itself. They start talking about stuff that, and showing stuff that's going to happen in the future is... Who's that? Who that? Is that? In fact, there's a whole bunch of different people. This almost looks like it's the Horseman of Apocalypse, but not the Horseman of Apocalypse, something else entirely. This is actually from issue number five that they're showing. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. They're talking about uh, H.B. Silva is actually going to be taking over the art for all of this. Mahmoud Asrar was just there for a little while. They're talking about, oh, look, here's issue number three. And I said there was going to be New Horseman of the Apocalypse, right? Oh my God, they actually show us and tell us who the new horsemen of Apocalypse are going to be. Now that's just crazy. That's crazy. They don't, well, actually they didn't say of Apocalypse. These are the, uh, the introducing the horsemen of salvation. So you know what this is? This is technically a first appearance. What did I just say? Free book, first appearance. Okay. Everybody always wonders, what's the first appearance of Wolverine in the comic books? Is it issue number 180, which is the uh, cameo appearance? Is it issue number 181, both of them of the Incredible Hulk, um, where it's his first full appearance? Well, you could argue it's issue number 115 of Daredevil, because in there, there's the advertisement with a picture of Wolverine saying, introducing, coming pretty soon, Wolverine. I'm just saying, technically... Technically, especially if you have the issue, you will say that is technically the first appearance of Wolverine. It's not going to be worth as much as the other two, but it's going to be worth a lot. You don't believe me, go look online. Now here, free book, first visual appearance in print of the, uh, the, the new horseman, the horseman of salvation. So the question is, is there a character called salvation? And if so, where's this character at? Who is this character? This is sick. So you actually get to see who these guys are. Blob, Magneto, Omega Red, and Angel. Which Angel? I'm thinking it's going to be Old Angel. No, can't be. Because something happens to Angel in this issue. It's probably uh, Old Angel. <gasps> this is crazy. This is just crazy. So um, I'm loving this. There's so many. And there's concept art in here. There is so much in here. There's also a history of these characters, of, uh, of these storylines and a promise that they're going to return to the Age of Apocalypse world. What? If you don't get this free book, it's probably because your comic book store doesn't have it, in which case you need to go and have a conversation with them because those fools need to get themselves a, uh, the proper comic book. Anyhow, um, there's also a whole bunch of stuff in here for Dead Man Logan by Ed Brisson, who's also in this comic book. Um, but I did say it was cover to cover, right? What's on the back cover? Oh, crap, look at that. Age of X-Men. Is that Nate Gray? Look at Nate Gray. Look at all his friends. He's there with all his little friends. Guys, you make sure you get this compa this free companion book, The Secrets of the Uncanny X-Men, because hell yeah, hell yeah. This is all going to go in the same, I don't know if I can fit all this in the same Mylar bag and cardboard container, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, guys, this was a long video. 
and it's totally worth it. I have spoken. Go grab your stuff because psh, seriously, man, and you might want to consider finding a new comic book store if you if they don't have all that stuff because damn, this is good stuff. This is good. This is good if you're a collector. This is good if you're just a fan. This is good if there's no just. But uh, yeah, this is good. This is real good. Anyway, I don't know if this is going to fit. And I kind of want to see if it's going to fit so I can let you guys know if it actually fits or not. If I can make it fit, anybody can make it fit because I'm feeling kind of handicapped right now because I'm still trying to talk to you guys. Oh, but what happens? Oh, it's a tight one. It's a tight one. But it fits. <laughs> still haven't fully recovered. And that's my cue to leave because, oh man, I'm not doing good here. Anyway, they do both fit into one single Mylar bag and board. You know, these things are expensive. All right, guys, I'm out. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.